All right, everyone, thank you so much for taking the time to show up on time and be early with us. We have a special guest, Michael McDougall. He's sipping his coffee. Um, Mike and I go way back. We started at a brokerage together and, um, yeah, kind of watched each other grow over the years. And he's one of the top agents in the country. And I heard him on a panel talking about the, um, what he's up to with COVID. And I thought, what an awesome opportunity if we could bring him on and share any insights that he has because it is really challenging and we are all making it up as we go. So before I pass over to Mike, um, before I pass over the mic, I just want to say, stress one thing. If you get nothing out of today, uh, then the number one thing you should get out of it is just stay home. The, the purpose of this webinar is not for me to prove to you that you can get out and start running the streets and helping people buying and selling homes. We're just going to ha talk about the reality of what's happening in today's world. And we do have to help certain people with buying and selling homes. And what's that look like in today's space? And at the time of the recording, it could change in a month. Maybe things get even worse, right? I don't know. So just use common sense about this whole thing. If you, when in doubt, talk to your broker of record. Because we have people, I see uh, Javier's here, uh, Luigi. That, like We're talking Miami, Florida, uh, New York. Um, Vancouver, Toronto, there's people all over from different markets. So there's different rules as well. Like some places are still allowing open houses and other places are not. So if Mike's area doesn't allow open houses and he's talking about the fact that they can't do open houses, then that doesn't mean you can't do open houses in your area. Although I probably wouldn't do open houses in any area regardless because of how contagious this thing is. Um, so yeah, I just really want to stress the whole fact that you should just stay home, use a lot of common sense. And we have a lot of fears and anxiety. So we're going to touch on those points today. And then also the, like, what marketing is working, that sort of thing. So Mike, you, um, can you share with us like a little bit about yourself? Like who, what's, what makes up the McDougal team? What, who are you? Yeah, man. Well, like you said, that you and I go obviously way back to uh, to our early years. Uh, started started in real estate when I was 23, so it's been 14 years now uh, being in real estate. Um, the McDougal team started in 2013, um, and right now that makes up seven members. Right now, myself, who is uh, primarily the listing agent, um, I have two other buyer reps. I have a licensed inside sales. A director of ops, marketing director, and a listing coordinator. So that pretty much makes up the uh, entire McDougal team. Um, like I said, we've been in business for 14 years. Uh, right now, we're sort of known for selling a property every 72 hours. It's on a lot of our marketing, and that's sort of been consistent for four to five years. Uh, we've done just under a quarter of a billion dollars in volume sales now for uh, the last four years. So we're an active real estate um, team. Uh, and I only say that not to brag about our numbers at all, but just to let people know, like when something like this happens uh, and you're running a, a very big business uh, with a large overhead uh, that you get a lot of fear right away. Um, so, and not to say just a big business, anyone, you know, even, mm -hmm. even starting out that I've been doing a lot of, you know, calls with, it's a crazy time to start right now. So, but that, that makes up the McDougal team. Well, when I started real estate, it was when the two, uh, 2008 bubble was hitting. And um, I didn't look at that as a bad thing at all. I, I never knew any difference from any other market. That was, to me, a normal market. And I, like, I did really well with it. This is a whole new ball game. This isn't ever seen before. Um, so if I was a brand new agent, I'd be worried. I mean, what are, you going, what are they supposed to do? As uh, team leaders, you guys have a lot of overhead and expenses and marketing costs and like there's a big machine that even though you might be able to get subsidies from the government for staffing, perhaps that doesn't cover all of your monthly ongoing expenses. You know what I mean? Like, correct. It's a real, there's a lot of fear going on. If I can um, make anybody feel better about the fear, it's this. And the, the fact that real estate is definitely a necessity because we all need to have a roof over our head. So say we are hunkered down for a month, two months, three months. Well, if people aren't going to wait, they're going to have to move because the mortgage came up, the divorce, like the real bad stuff could happen to people and even real good stuff. Somebody has to move for some reason that's like a positive and they have to move. There's just people that have to move. So there's going to be a tipping point. And um, right now we're just in the bubbling process where that will um, explode in the future. Yeah. I, I totally, you know, totally feel the same way you're, you're talking there just about the, the necessity to move and, 
Uh, you made a good point at the beginning of this too, is I just want everyone to know as well, everything I say today, uh, these are things that we've developed obviously over the last four weeks. We're not professionals at this new world um, and, and nobody is, but we did adapt very quickly because I think we were about a week ahead of it going crazy here. We actually shut down a week before with remote working and, and just to verify too, I have not met with a single client uh, in almost five weeks now. My entire team has not. So uh, just in case anyone, you know, talks about, uh, you know, disrespecting the stay at home, we have completely stayed at home. We are working entirely remotely from home as well. And that goes for my entire team. Yeah. When we were talking, you had like, it, it was a, like eight or something listings or sales um, and you didn't even leave your kitchen basically. Yeah. And um, so, but that's not how you were doing business before. So how did you shift into that gear? Like uh, that? I'm sure week one, we all didn't know that it was going to continue week two and double week three, double. So like even myself, I was in a little bit of a funk of like, I don't know. I don't have anything to say because I don't know what's going on. So when people were calling me, I, I really didn't have any answers. And then for my own personal self, I wasn't pushing for the business. I wasn't doing anything like that. So I was starting to get stale myself. And um, I definitely had to shift my mindset for sure. And it, it took me longer than I thought. Like normally I'm, I'm like a light switch and I could just flip on a dime, but it probably impacted me for about two and a half weeks before I finally, uh, saw a path that I should like a new path that I should be on. So wh how did you jump past? Like, so, so I mean, obviously, you know, being used to being extremely busy, you know, I should mention as well, I have three kids, um, twins and, uh, uh almost a seven year old and my wife as well. So I'm used to being very busy, like super, super involved in my family life. Time is like most valuable to me than anything. Uh, and then obviously super busy in the real estate world. So to go from that busy lifestyle, and, and to look forward at, oh, like, what is this going to look like? I'm just sort of an entrepreneur at heart where I can't just sit still very long. I was about 48 hours of it in the doom and gloom, I'd say. Um, th those anxious feelings, the fear. And then I, I remember the morning I went for a run and I had a Tim Ferriss podcast on and he was interviewing nice. uh, Jack Cornfield. And Jack Cornfield said that you can choose to be uh, a victim or a victor in this time. And that just like totally... Uh, like went through my entire body as I was running. And I was just like, you know what? Like, I want to look back on this time and know that the Michael McDougall team had the tools, had the technology, had uh, the service still to be able to get people that needed to move to, from A to B. Because I told my team, I only want to help people that need to move. I'm not, I'm not here to motivate people into moving into this market. It's if you need to move, I want to be there for them and have proven results that we can do this. So it was a lot of going back to books, podcasts. I, I read a book called The Captain Class uh, by Sam Walker, and, and he said something too that in this moment is so important. And he said that true leaders take responsibility for any environment the, they see themselves in. So anything that happens out there, a, a true leader steps up, takes responsibility for it, and goes with it. And you know, as a leader of my team, uh, you know, of my family. I was like, I, I need to be that person right now. I can't be the one that sits on the sidelines and hopes for an end day of this because we don't know when that's going to be. And I can't sit here and say July 1st, everything's going back to normal. Yeah, no. So how did um, like the first client that after the first 48 hours where you were on, on doom and gloom and then eventually somebody picked up the phone and called or message yeah. and said, hey, we're think really thinking of selling. What did you do then? Like, what were the steps of like the new, what was the new business model? How so my script, my script right away was, uh, Mr. Seller, thanks so much for calling me right now. Uh, and what is the reason for you needing to move at this time? And then once they delivered that reason, um, I would go back into saying, um, you know what, myself, my entire team is practicing social distancing at this point. I want to keep my family safe, my team safe, the public safe, people like you safe. So uh, I, I'm, I'm uh, practicing social distancing. So everything we've done has actually gone virtual. And the upside to that is the McDougal team has been very far uh, advanced in technology and uh, video um, marketing. So this isn't that new to us, but I will not be meeting you at your home. Are you okay with that? And um, I haven't had one per, I had, I had one you know, person that fought back on that a, a little bit. Uh, and I'll get into that later on, but nobody actually, everyone really respected it. 
Um, and, and what I did is after I booked that virtual appointment, I had a system before the actual video tour. Uh, because what I do is I would tell them we're going to have a, you know, a FaceTime at this time. You're going to walk me through your entire home. Okay. So FaceTime, just for people that are listening and didn't FaceTime is on iPhones. You can do a, a video conference call. If you don't have iPhone and you don't know what FaceTime is, um, then I would plan B would be uh, Facebook messenger. You can do yeah. video conferencing through that or Skype. Um, a lot of us in, in real estate use Zoom and a lot of realtors have it in their head that they should be using Zoom with their clients. Yeah. And I don't think that's the case no. because you would need your other client to download the app and install the program. It's like my mom, if she was a client, she, you'd lose her before the listing appointment if you so had to get the, her to and install. The thing, and the, yeah, and the reason for that is I actually, my script was uh, I can FaceTime you or whatever type of video conferencing calls you're comfortable with because... I didn't want the appointment to start off like you said, where it's like, I can't hear you. Can you turn the audio? It's bottom left. It's like, I didn't want it to start out yeah. uncomfortable because it already is uncomfortable when you're meeting them for the first time over video. Um, but before that appointment, I sent out a bomb bomb video because we use bomb bomb a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a video thanking them for the appointment uh, that they have agreed to this. And a lot of times I had my kids in the background you know, cause I just did it casually yeah. and I wanted them to understand the reason why I was so serious about the social distancing is that I do have a family to protect back home. And this wasn't just a selfish reason of me not wanting to go to their home. Um, right. and, and I, you know, the response to that was great too. And, and it also, I said, I want you to see me in person in a video before that actual call, just so they felt a little more comfortable with me as well. Now, did you uh, modify your listing presentation to talk about the new process or did you, obviously maybe not in the first one, you would have been making it up, but yeah. um, is that something that you've done or are considering doing? Yeah, we, we've modified it because I, like I said, I didn't want to, you know, overwhelm them with a lot of um, information during the actual virtual tour, right. um, the FaceTime, I'll call it the FaceTime call. Mm -hmm. um, so prior to that appointment, I actually sent a lot, a lot of information to the client regarding the current market, you know, the, the fact that 85% of showings are down, 65% of our numbers of solds are down. I wanted them to get on the same page as me. I didn't want to have to talk them into the market during that tour. I wanted that tour to be strictly a tour and maybe us building some more common ground. Right. Um, I also didn't want them, I wanted to find out right away, is this client in a complete denial on the market? Like, do they have market denial right now? Do they think the market's still going up? So, when I sent them, you know, a few comps, stats that backed it up, it got them in the mindset of, okay, we need to sell. We need to listen to this guy because he's a professional and we need to take his advice. And I didn't want to be fighting them on price the entire appointment. And one of them did fight you. Maybe not on the price, but on, on something. Um, meeting, yeah, meeting with me. Um, you know, they really wanted to meet with me. Uh, yeah. They just didn't think this could be done online. And... Um, I, I just stuck to my standards, right? I, I don't, to me, no sale right now is worth, you know, risking this in front of other people. And I feel like we should listen to our, you know, provincial leaders uh, when they tell us to stay home. So uh, I didn't take that appointment. And, um, you know, you might have seen my Facebook post, but three days, three days later, that person called me back and they tested positive for COVID-19. So that right there is a reason why I'm just sticking to my standards. I've always been like that. When I have something in my mind, it's like, that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And that was scary though to hear that. Cause it's like, I could have, you know, I could have taken that appointment yeah. with them and then, you know, risked my entire family being, uh, you know, um, you know, at risk with something like that. So I think sticking to your standards, once you make a decision that you know is right, uh, don't let any sale jeopardize that. Right. Cause that, that wouldn't have been, that wouldn't have been worth it <laughs> in my opinion. And, um, and what about like prepping the listing for the marketing? What we'll talk about the marketing of the listing. And then I also want to talk about just marketing in general, but uh, the marketing of the listing, like some areas, maybe photographers can work and maybe some areas photographers can't. What, what are you guys doing to prep the listing so you can get it viewed online? Yeah. I mean, um, obviously, you know, our photos and our virtual tours are super important in this type of day and age because most of our, you know, our engagement level has been gone up huge online because most people are going to that to tour the home now instead of actually um, touring uh, the actual property. So we, we jumped on a couple different systems now that are more so virtual tour, like you're actually in the house. 
uh, you know, and you can go room to room. Uh, that's not something we were doing before. We were always doing, you know, HD uh, videos, but we just did more of a, mm. a virtual tour approach now. And again, the engagement level has gone, gone huge on that. But our, our marketing, because we didn't want to get a bad rep in this, our marketing's really just been pushing huge about staying at home and that we can totally do this virtually. Like I have listed uh, 10 to 12 homes now that I have not, you know, seen. Uh, I have not physically met the sellers other than, you know, video. So we've really been pushing that this can be done. We have proof now for the past five weeks of sales that are very successful. Um, again, though, this is still new to everybody, but it, it, can, it can be done. And well, what about the contracts? You're getting them to sign on an iPad on their own or you drop, you, how do you get that? So we've, I mean, we've always used, uh, you know, online e-signature programs and, and that's the thing. We've been doing a lot of this stuff for like three, four years. Um, you know, tons of video emails. Like we, I send more video emails than written emails, right? So like very, very comfortable with video uh, e-signatures, super comfortable with that. Um, so we've been using that for the most part of, you know, our last three or four years. So they've been mm -hmm. signing through e-signature. Um, and I'd say like, the one thing I want to tell people, because a lot of people had that fear of like, how can I switch my business from, from face to face to not? I, I, I wrote out every activity, right? Like mm -hmm. every single activity that we did on a listing. And there, there was about 25 activities from like the inbound call to the day that listing hits or the, or the offer. And like, do you know how many, do you know how many times I actually got in front of the client during that? I want to say two. Yeah, you're, you're close. So it, it was just one time. It was the initial listing appointment because most of my clients nowadays, they live very busy lives as well. And it's very, it's very more convenient for them for e-signature and things online. So other than meeting them for the first time, and I mean, I'm a relationship person. Like I like the face-to-face. -face, I like building that rapport. But other than that initial listing appointment, that was the only time really I was seeing the seller. So when I, when I had two columns about all the activities, the face-to-face, -face, there was one check mark there. So I really had to replace one actual activity for my listings. And that's just like, okay, now I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to go to their home. Mm -hmm. It's going to be FaceTime. So as soon as I got my head around that, my mindset around that, it, it sort of just took off. And, and it was all, it was all confidence after that. Um, so some people are going to probably question like, well, what about room measurements? Um, and that sort of thing. Wh how, not that you even have the right answer. I don't even know. Yeah. I just thought I'd throw that out. Yeah, no, that's fair. It's a tough question. So no, that's a good question. I get that a lot actually. So we're not putting room measurements on our listings and I have a very good clause that myself and my lawyer have put together mm. that protects my seller in the agreement of purchase and sale uh, to get away from any liability on myself or my seller for room measurements. Uh, and I think that, like I said, man, this is like, you just gotta be creative. So as yeah. soon as something that's not going to work, how can we get something now to either protect us or that will work? And I'm not going to take old measurements off of an old listing because I don't trust anyone else's measurements. Yeah. I'd rather just leave them blank. Um, and I mean, that was my listing coordinator's job. So right away she said, you know, what do you want me to do? And I said, we're leaving them blank because the pictures really tell the home anyways. Mm -hmm. And I don't usually typically look at that measurement and go, ah, eh, I'm not going to bother looking at it. If it's blank, they're going to probably get the point that it's blank for a reason. Yeah. And you can and, put that in the description, yeah, like exactly. that broker notes. Yeah, yeah. As well. Um, cool. Um, so what, what marketing are you doing to keep in touch with your database? A lot of agents are asking me about marketing and I'm like, I would be kind of holding back on doing cold lead generation, like paying for cold internet leads. And if anything, shifting my budget towards getting that listing viewed online and or um, reconnecting and building Mindshare with your database. So that's kind of like my suggestion, but yeah. um, what, what's working for you? No, those are really good suggestions. So, I mean, my, I, I agree with you. We're, put, we're pushing a lot into our current listings right now and pumping more budget into that because uh, I'm able to pull back on some other things. But you're right. Like I, I've canceled my inside sales uh, activities. We're not calling people for, for new business right now. Mm -hmm. No one wants to hear from us that way. Um, what I'm doing is I'm focusing on my database right now. And uh, we've always been huge into client care. We run four to five client events a year uh, that are all amazing like turnouts. So 
we halted our, our, we rent out Cineplex typically, um, well, every single spring. So we halted that actually a week before this all ended. I had that gut feeling like we're not going to be able to do this. Uh, and then all the news broke the week later then, and things got shut down. So we're just reaching out to our database. I, I, I reach out through video email, uh, personal emails, because I, I, I do like my clients. I actually, um, you know, always just, it's just simple. It's like, how are you doing through this? Is there anything I can do for you? Um, as soon as this happened, I offered, you know, anyone that needed groceries, right, to just send me their grocery list. No one sent me their grocery list, but the amount of people that sent back, like, thank you so much. Like, that's mm-hmm. just like, that's amazing, but we're good. We have, you know, daughters that can get us um, or sons that can get us uh, groceries. It's just like letting them know that you're there to help. And I heard something amazing yesterday. It's like, if you don't contact your database right now, you're pretty much showing them that you only care to contact them when there's something in it for you. And I don't want my clients to think that because that's not how I am. So I want them to know that I'm, I'm at this point in my career for a reason. It's because of all you guys. And is there anything I can do for you right now in this time that we don't really know when this will end? It's just being there for them. It's being a community leader. And I told, you know, several people that if, if you call yourself a community leader out there, and you don't step up in this time that you, you should take that title off your Facebook profile because this is a, this is a time right now that you can show. That and a professional problem solver. Yeah. Every, everything's like a problem that nobody really has the answers for and you just got to kind of like make it up yourself. Um, now, speaking of making things up, uh, social media, your social media account of all people I follow on Instagram, yours actually cracks me up on a continuous basis. I don't know if you hired a, who's a comedian, but you guys are brilliant at your social media. Now I'm assuming the tone has changed. I haven't checked you out in the last like month or so, but, uh, prior to that, it was always like really, really funny, um, pop culture kind of like if something broke on Ellen that week, then the next day you had something that kind of tied in with it. Yeah. Um, now are you shifting the, t- the tone or what are you up to with your social? You know what we sort, we did for the first four weeks, I'd say we sort of just, um, we, we actually just started spreading a lot of community cheer. So we asked the community to send in their drawings that kids were doing chalk paint drawings, uh, of rainbows, just things about, you know, uh, staying home, keeping safe. So we started plastering a lot of things we were getting back from our database of their kids drawing, you know, fun pictures or, or, you know, big, big rainbows on their driveway, which was pretty cool because there was so much negative news Mm -hmm. that we wanted to try and cheer people up. Um, So we went that route for the first few weeks uh, to get away from the doom and gloom. And we sort of got back into the humor of things now, not to be unsensitive with what's going on, but again, just to sort of make people laugh. Um, Again, when you're naturally someone that just likes to entertain people, it's really hard to sort of stay put for a while. Um, but again, we also have, you know, lots of active listings. We still have about two listings a week coming out right now, sometimes three. So in between all that fun stuff, we're still marketing our clients properties, but, um, we're being very sensitive still to the matter because I mean, this is very serious. People people are losing their lives over this. So we're not, we're not making fun of COVID whatsoever. Like, you know, some of the posts I've seen out there, we're just, we're making people smile more, uh, by completely talking about something different. Um, total brainstorming idea. Um, just ballpark. W- what would it be for the movie theater? A couple thousand dollars, right? Like two to four thousand for the yeah. theater and food and all that. So, so yeah, with the amount of people we have that come, we're we're closer to like the six thousand dollar mark. But okay, we get a big turnout. But we we did. You go ahead because you're probably gonna say the same thing that my director of ops told us to do. No, I'm so my my thought was whatever that budget was, it was six thousand. Basically, cut it in half, so now you got three thousand to play play with. Now, what I would do is go through my database and call everybody and just ask them who in your immediate family is an essential service worker that is like really feeling the pressure. Is there anybody? I'm not sure. And then just like have that conversation. And then what you do is. take that pool of money and then do something for those people. So for all the nurses that are in your database and all the uh, postal workers and all the people that are like still frontline and uh, maybe not making as big a dollars as they should be for the hero cape that we're plastering them with. um, They're, they're feeling like I saw a bunch of nurses and then people will comment on them. Okay, be safe. And she's probably thinking like, 
I know. Okay. Like what, am, like, what am I supposed to do? Thanks. Um, so anyways, take that $3,000 and then do something really cool for each of them. Like maybe buy them uh, three months of like uh, Netflix or something. Yeah, no, that, that's an awesome idea. What, what we did with, uh, with um, the frontline workers is we wanted to give back because naturally that's just how we are on the team and in our community. And my, uh, my kids painted all these bags. We had all these McDougal team bags from a, a Christmas market we did last year. They painted rainbows on it and all these awesome inspiring messages on it. And we just stuffed them full of uh, snacks, drinks, Gatorade, food. And I dropped them all off at uh, the Lake Ridge head office there. And they were like, they weren't blown away with what we stuffed in there. They were blown away by like the pictures and the cheer. And the guy who was the head there just said like this, this is going directly to the emergency room at Lake Ridge on the people that are right there in the front lines. So it's like, it's little things like that that can totally change their day and put a smile on their face when they're dealing with the worst day possible right now. Um, mm. And second to what you said about the movie theater. So Ashley, my director of, of ops at the office there, she had a brilliant idea about, Hey, I know we can't take everyone to the theater, but can we bring the theater to them? Mm. And right away I'm going cha-ching, cha-ching. Like, what is this going to cost Ash? But it actually was 50% of what I typically spend to literally have them rent, you know, a movie from Cineplex, you know, the, the trolls movie. And that gives parents something for their kids to do in this time. Again, if you don't have that budget, that, that's, that's cool. It's just, right. You know, that's an amazing idea to bring, bring the theater to their kids. Everyone's just like craving for other activities for their kids to be doing right now. So I thought, you know, this is an amazing opportunity for that as well. How, what was the logistics behind that to get everybody a different download or whatever? It's a pin number. Cineplex sent me the email. Oh, yeah, cool. So it's a, pin, it's a pin number. We haven't done it yet. Nice. Well, that's yeah. a cool idea. I like that. We are ordering it. But yeah, it's, so it's a pin number. We haven't actually done it, so I don't know how it works, but there, it's a pin number that someone yeah. at home enters in. Cool. That's really cool. Yeah. And you pay per use per like login or you whatever? Pay, you pay per login. And they'll give you a, a, I don't know, you know what the deal is, but if you're getting, you know, 500 people, they'll obviously cut you a deal. Yeah. And it's remote anyways. What do they care? It's not. Yeah costing them any physical tangible totally. they need the money what am i talking about They're, they'll be like yes you can probably negotiate it yeah 25 percent off or whatever um sweet okay so there's a ton of questions what are the tools that you're using right now like um yeah just they for you it might be common sense because you've been using it for the last four years but what tools do you think are like an absolute necessity for somebody listening to this yeah like so i wonder when the understand like I'm not like a super tech guy like at all oh um, he's not I can attest to that yeah I like I'm almost embarrassingly not I do have people on my team that are my my marketing director Jana is someone I usually lean on for that uh who obviously we can't meet with other than just phone calls and zooms um so I mean for video emails right I, I've been doing video emails for a long time and I still think they're the best way of showing you know face to name instead of you know when we're trying to lead gen and you got six agents all emailing the same type of content and your video, I think your video will stand out. So uh, BombBomb's a tool I use for that. I like knowing that they've opened it, how many times they've watched it. And uh, so I understand, you know, when they've seen it and how to follow up. Um, for the tour, the virtual tours, I've, I've just honestly been using FaceTime and uh, WhatsApp was done on one of them. And, and that's just, I'm letting the client pick. Yeah, I let the client pick. Ask them, what do they use? Like, have you ever done a video call? What did you use? Let them answer. And yeah. then you adapt to them. You shouldn't be forcing them to no. stick with what you got. I don't want point. them to have to download anything and, and get frustrated. I, I know just seeing my wife downloading kids' educational stuff, how frustrating it can get when something's not working. So I want them to be comfortable. So it's whatever they want. Mm -hmm. um, and then just our... our um, day-to-day -day, uh you know team meetings are all done through zoom right now so there's nothing we're using that's actually sort of you know edge. crazy out there that yeah. uh you know dan i'm sure you have way more tools in your back pocket than what uh what i'm talking about right now well i got one that um would goes in alignment with what you're up to the um you used to do the hd photos and now you're doing more of a virtual tour style um and there's different companies that provide that service matterport is a big one yeah. that i hear a lot about um but there's different markets so i don't know who people use in their area anyways there's a product called loom l-o-o-m 
and it allows you to record your computer screen and then it has a picture in picture so it'll have your picture while you're recording the screen and you could virtually walk through the listing talking about it and explaining the upgrades and the amenities and blah 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 and you're just going through each listing you yeah. make a three to five minute video save that video upload it to youtube put that on your listing page of your website and now you've got um, a guided tour like a real virtual tour that's guided by you with your voice and your face and maybe even your branding i don't know if the branding would work but definitely your face and your voice and the, the tool is called loom and it works really good like, i love that idea that's an awesome review. take a look at that because you could walk through and talk about like see these stairs they just up I don't know why I use stairs. Anyways, they updated these stairs for whatever reason. And now we're going to go up the stairs and you're going to see the, this loft over to the left. And you're just like walking through like yeah. you would walk through. And it's not like you have to be in the property with a stabilizing gimbal and you're all shaky. And yeah. no, just do a screen recording. You, you don't even have to put pants on. Yeah, exactly. I'm well, not even wearing pants. That, yeah, that's an awesome idea because you can talk about things that you might not see in that virtual tour, right? You can talk about the pantry. You can talk about, like you said, that apparently everybody wants an upgraded staircase. So you can talk about that upgraded staircase. But yeah. things that you don't necessarily see in the picture, right? Maybe it's a spice rack next to the stove. Those are things that, you know, a lot of people want to know about and they don't get that by a virtual tour. So I love that idea. I'll write that down. Cool. Good. I'm glad I could bring you value. And um, there, then um, the other challenge is people put all this effort into making video and you look at their YouTube channel and it's like 18 views, yeah. 34 views. It's like zero views basically. Um, so there's a, a strategy that we use and it's called um, uh, video discovery ads. It's on YouTube and you can do a video discovery ad, but you can do the targeting to only target people in your city that um, are in the market to buy a home. Google knows who's in the market to buy a home. So you combine the two filters. Um, the, the discovery ad is the delivery of the message. And yeah. then the uh, in market is the type of advertising. And you can choose residential real estate um, moving soon. And the, um, only people in your city will see those. And um, on average, we've done a couple of clients as tests. And I'm going to do it for you. So for the next month, I'm going to do one of your listings. And so our, pa our past test, he was getting like 16 or 30 views. Now he's getting 1,600. And they're targeted to people that are buying, like thinking of moving. And a view doesn't count if it's under um, 29 seconds. So it's 30 seconds or more. That's right. what we count as a view. Not, not like five seconds and hit the skip button. You know, those don't count. Yeah. Um, so that if I like, that's a good marketing play in today's world because like the sellers need to see views cause like people aren't, what did you say? The showings are down to like 0%. 85%. Yeah. 85%. So you're right. Like everyone's so used to just posting promoted ads on Facebook and wherever else and seeing their engagement level at, you know, 10 to 20,000. Well, you know, most of those people aren't actually buying that home. And if they're on it for two seconds, like that's not an engagement. So things like what you're talking about. And, and again, like that's why this is such a trial and error right now because no one's been through this time. So you need to work harder to get actual engagement on people that are targeted that are actually looking to buy. With showings down 85%, I can tell you right now, I have listings that typically would have had seven showings in one day that are, you know, lucky right now to get two to three a week, like lucky. Right, and not even lucky sort of lucky but not because you got people coming in the house like yeah, you know what i mean yeah. so it, it, it's a weird space we're in where we're saying what's lucky and what's not yeah um, sure. yeah yeah no but um yeah so that marketing that i just talked about how how much do you think that would cost i'll just tell you 100 bucks so yeah. for 100 bucks you get 1600 targeted views to people that are buying a home and um, you could put that as part of your like listing presentation of like, Hey, the numbers are down 80%. So what we're doing is we're really pushing. Um, I, I would call it not views. I would call it um, virtual showings. Yeah. Just coin a whole new phrase. So we, we, we position ourselves to get virtual showings so that we don't have the foot traffic have to come through your home because showings are down 80% and this is how we do it. And if you list with us, this is what you get and it would help you. I think that would really help out. I think that's an awesome idea. Uh, so I want to do that for you for uh, next month. And um, okay, so what else? What other marketing is working for you to like, get the phone to ring? Is there any, or are you? What are you doing when you get a listing? Like, what's you know? You know what I think? Like to get the phone ringing. I think like a lot of people are seeing our in um, our ads out there that are just talking about that. You know, we have the tools to do this. So 
like I said, I wanted to become sort of that team that was known for being able to stay at home and still successfully sell a house. So I think that word is starting to spread now, now that we're into like, you know, week five or whatever week we're in now. Um, so a lot of just the social media ads and word of mouth is now starting to, to be like, Hey, this, this guy can do this without coming into your home. And, and he's got the confidence in the team, the support. It's not just me, right? It's my entire team behind this. So that's working really well. Just, uh, and again, that took a bit of time because the first week or two sort of everyone was sort of panicking, but I, if, I, sorry, go ahead. If people are committed to like, say they signed a contract and they have to be in a magazine or newspaper, or they're still doing like digital banner ads, um, maybe you can still do that. I would just change up the message. So I would say something like uh, real estate with COVID-19 and then do bullet points of like, virtual listing appointments, virtual showings, and like talk about the tools that you use and yeah. more shifting towards that as opposed to number one realtor yes. or whatever. Not that there's yeah, anything no, wrong with no that. One, no one cares about your days on market average right now that you're, you know, you're the best, you're the number one realtor in Durham region that wears a blue suit every day. Like, yeah, I mean, you can pull up any stat, but it's like people right now care about safety and they want to know that you're sensitive to the matter. So our, our marketing has completely changed just because I, I do believe in that. And it's not, I'm just not just changing it because it looks good. I, I do believe and I'm practicing what I preach. So yeah, it's just changing everything up. It's taking sort of the same type of ads and just completely changing the content on them. And, what's, the, uh, go ahead. what's the, what's the process with a buyer? So you get somebody who's like been in the hopper for a couple months and they have to buy a home for whatever reason. They're like, I don't care about COVID. I have to buy a home. Who knows what they say? So what's the process of like you showing them property or getting them in the homes? Like what's, are you doing buyers right now or is it all so, just listings? So I had this question yesterday on a panel too. We're, we're just doing listings right now. We're trying to f figure out a way uh, to do this in an ethical, proper way with a buyer. And I know there's people showing listings out there and they're, they're showing my listings. Um, we're putting together a couple things just to get complete approval from the seller, um, the brokerages in terms of just so, so there's absolutely zero contact. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think it's very hard because at the end of the day, yeah. you know, you can sell a house to a buyer that's never seen that home, but there's a condition there that they got to see the home. So there still is that appointment. Right. You have to see the home. So whether it's the buyer leaves the, or the seller leaves the door open on that, on that visit and the, the buyer's allowed going into that property and the agent's allowed staying in their car outside. Like there's a lot of things I'm hearing out there. I don't really want to give my opinion on it because we're not yeah, yeah. buyers as much. I, I wish, we could help a lot of buyers right now, but I'm not willing to put my team in a position where they feel like they have to go and do something. Um, right. So I've been really focused just right now on helping people that need to sell their home. Well, that's the number one thing people want to know, right? At, at any market is how do I get more listings? So it's incredible that you've been able to just focus on the listing side of things. Um, that's incredible. Um, you could make a, a COVID FAQ, like a frequently asked question and turn it into a blog. Yeah. Um, so both from the seller's perspective and a buyer's perspective, that'll help with like organic, like, um, visibility, but then take that blog and turn it into smaller snippets for that you could use for repurposing for your social media and maybe even your follow-up drip plans. Yeah. So that's, just, a, that's a great idea. That's the FAQ is a great idea. Yeah. So maybe start writing mastermind with your team. What are the questions they're getting mastermind with your brokerage? What are the questions we're getting? And then I would do that as a brokerage. So do it at a brokerage level, whatever your brokerage is, do like a virtual meeting later next week. And, um, everybody brainstorm on what are the questions people are asking and then, um, come up with like a, a response and then everybody can share. Like we did that um, at our brokerage, uh, you weren't in the room, but we did a listing presentation and we had right. like eight, 18 people and, we, and together we made a really kick-ass listing presentation. Yeah. And then at the end of it, everybody got a copy that they could modify and make their own, but it was more of like the content. Yeah, no, that's, I, think that's, I think that's great. And, and to sort of go back to like, you know, some of these questions you get from sellers, you know, because we're, we're typically known that we stage every single property. But we've also been virtually staging for four years where a lot of people are just starting to do that now. So again, that was another, you know, technology that we were really familiar with. So it wasn't anything really different. And my staging company that uh, I exclusively hire, they were doing just virtual staging appointments. So they would do their, you know, consultation, but it would be much more like my FaceTime appointment. So 
they'd be walked through the property on the phone as well. And they would just start putting together a to-do list and then would email that off right away. And, and they wouldn't go back to that home, but at least the client had a decluttering list, things that they knew they could move around. I haven't had one negative response in that. So again, like all these things, it's just taking the time to brainstorm, you know, get creative and think like, how can we do this still without actually physically being in that home? And, uh, you know, like, like you said, and I was saying, like, I think it's uh, 11 or 12 properties now we've listed um, and, and they've all been uh, successful. Some of them are just on the market now, mm-hmm. but this, these were all able to happen by just literally me staying in this room. <laughs> right. And, uh, and just through technology. So it's pretty amazing what you can accomplish when you, and, and again, like I told you, it's, it's like 100% confidence. If you don't have confidence in this, you need to work hard at it to get that confidence. But this is like straight up just a confidence thing. I believe it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, there's a fl- there's, what is there, 90 people on the call right now, a flurry of questions. I couldn't like look and read the questions and be in conversation with you at the same time. So I just avoided them. But I'm just going to try and touch on a couple of them. Um, What are the common objections that uh, you're facing? Like from either the buyer, seller, your anybody, your sphere of influence, your friends, your family. That's a good one. Do you have objections from your family of saying like, what are you doing? Why you, I'd say you the main that. objections at the very beginning were like, shame on you for still working during this. And that's just because I wasn't doing a good enough job to put the perception out there that we were staying at home during this time. So I think anyone that's doing this, make sure you back that up with like, this is all from like our home. Um, Cause we had a couple of trolls, you know, right away that were just sort of, I shouldn't call them trolls. These were people that obviously, yeah. you know, didn't uh, respect what we were doing. And, and don't get me wrong, people that just jumped on the call, like this is, I'm only working with people that need to sell or buy. Like that, that was it. There was no like, I'm going to start calling my funnel and push people to move right now. This was like people that had bought or sold or relocating or, or you know, uh, whatever they had to do. They had other commitments that they had to, to sell. Um, so the main, that was just the one objection. We have not had a single negative comment in I think almost like, that was the first week, so almost four weeks now. Mm-hmm. On, on, you know, what are you doing right now? You shouldn't be doing this because I, I've really put out there on everything that uh, we're, we're social distancing and staying at home. I like the idea of um, the, they have to put an offer on the property and then they can view the property. Like that shows how serious they are because it is such a serious disease. We should, I had a client a um, couple days ago and it was the equivalent of you. So if people don't know, Michael McDougall is Durham region, which is Oshawa, Whippy, Pickering, Ajax, Bowmanville, Brooklyn, that sort of thing, east of Toronto. Um, so it would be the equivalent of somebody coming to you saying, hey, I want to go look at a property in um, North Peterborough or something. Yeah. Would you hop in a car and drive them over there? Like, no, no you wouldn't, right? So um, I would only be working with people that absolutely have to move. Um, the rest of it, I don't think it's worth the risk. No, no, absolutely. You're, you're right. Like this isn't just something that I'm not just trying to fill my day. Like I have, uh, and, and you know, for anyone that, that doesn't know me, like I'm a super routine person. So I, I write down my goals, things I need to do every day. And that's what I accomplish. I'm not trying to fill it with things that I feel like are not important. And this is just, this is for people that, you know, need our services more than ever right now. So. A lot of the questions we already touched on, one says um, regarding room measurements, and they made a good point that Matterpoint, Matterport yeah. actually does room measurements as well. They will, so, they will do them, yeah. So you could have the measurements and just not put it on the listing and then give it to the agent as like, a, this is a, a, a scratch pad rough estimate because you didn't measure it. It was some guy with a camera. Yeah, and Matterport right. will also do floor plans too, right? So you could actually get even, if you want to go further, you could actually get complete floor plans done of the home. And, and I've seen some agents doing that and marketing those as well. Somebody says, um, OBS open broadcast software for doing like, there's a, the disc, there's a discussion happening right now. People are talking about loom L O O M, which is the thing that records your screen with you being picture in picture. Yeah. And then somebody says, um, Oh, Richard says, uh, open broadcast software. So okay. maybe that could be one to look at. I haven't looked at open broadcast software. I know loom is good. Um, but man, you should totally like after this week for your listings, just go do a, a, a screen recording with you picture in picture talking yeah. about it. No, I love that idea. Put that on. Actually, that'll be the video that we get the views for you. So do, I won't do it unless you do the video. Okay, perfect. There we go. <laughs> nice. <coughs> 
virtual tours. Yeah. Uh, Dan, can you share a link and info on the video discovery? Yep, I can. Um, I'm going to work over the weekend. So I'm going to do like, a, I'm going to create a webinar that shows brokerages how their agents can do this video discovery ad for themselves. But then I'm going to tie it in and say, hey, if you don't want to do it, I can do it for you. Um, and therefore, I'm not like turning it into a sales pitch um, right. because they do get the value. And yeah, the video discovery is a brilliant, brilliant play. It's too bad you can't really do that with face. Here's the thing with Facebook. If you don't right now, Michael, but later when we hang up, um, go on Facebook and just like scroll down to the f first ad that you see and then scroll and count to four, you're going to see another ad. So okay. Facebook is putting an ad on every fourth post on your feed and people don't even realize they're just so brainwashed into like scrolling. Right. And then so every fourth post is an ad and then all the the thir three posts in between are like covid scary times so it's like facebook is a really shitty place to be right now yeah i find anyways like i i had a real um internal tear with like should i be posting i don't even think it, what's the sense i didn't have a, like why am i posting anything right now i had a lot of like mental uh yeah. blockages and so I think Facebook is not a good place for marketing at the moment. Um, Google, Google probably is if you can dial in the, the targeting for sure. Yeah. And what I, other? I, I would, well, I would think too, because one of the main questions that I've been getting is, you know, how can you build rapport when you're so used to meeting with that client? How are you able to do this over the phone? And I want everyone to write down the, this book that I'm reading called Never Split the Difference. Mm. It's by a hostage negotiator, Chris Voss. And I'm telling you, if this guy can build common ground on the phone to a terrorist, <laughs> you can build rapport with hopefully a normal human being that wants to sell their home. And it's just asking more questions. And it's really what it is, is asking more questions and being creative. And he He's got um, an audiobook version of it, and I really suggest the audio version of it because when you read the written version, which I have, um, you read it in your tonality with your speed and your language with how you pronounce things. But when you listen to him, he speeds things up, he slows things down, and he yeah, leans that's in. I'm, I'm halfway through the audiobook right now. Yeah, the audiobook is so good. Yeah, but it's it doesn't really it teach you just like, you know, the strategic, you know, tactical empathy that he's talking about and just there's so many pointers in that book that is actually so relevant to what we're going through right now. Yeah. So uh, I would tell everybody start that book right away. If they're having that fear of like, man, how can I, how can I do this over the phone or over video? Like I'm so used to being face to face. What's the name of the book? I know you said it, but somebody said, repeat it. Never split the difference. Yeah. And it's a yellow cover. It's like, you'll see it. Yeah. What's his name? Something weird. Chris, Chris Voss. Yeah, Chris Voss. I guess that's not weird. Anyways, Chris no, it's Voss. Not, it's, not, it's not that weird at all, actually. No, Chris Voss, and uh, never split the difference. I met him um, about a month ago. Did you? Yeah, he's a really cool guy. Yeah, he's that's really nice. That's right there. That's the book right there. Yellow and yeah. yeah. Yep. Chris Voss, never split the difference. Nice. Oh, hey, Margaret. Thanks for commenting. Um, I think the other thing, too, if I can just sort of chime in, is, you know, people are saying, how are you getting clients on on your same mindset level of the market. And it's really simple with, with the stats that are coming out to us right now and how, how low the showings are, how, how low the, the number of sold properties are. You can just draw a graph, like whether it's like a, a hill or I just do like sort of like a, like a staircase up and down like that. Yeah. And uh, I have all the stats on that. And I ask the client, like, where do you think this market's going right now? And when they're looking at a graph that shows 85% of the showings are down, solds are low, we hit a, we hit a peak early March, they, they only really have one answer, right? And if, and if they don't and they think it's going higher right now, then they're in market denial is what I call it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but again, I want them to decide it. I'm not here to decide everything for them. I'm just trying to coach them along. Um, so again, but that gets them, you know, that gets them right on, the same page as you. So now I know, okay, they understand where the market's going. We need to be priced ahead of the market right now. Hold that drawing up. What? Hold that drawing up while you uh, describe it. So that's just a staircase up and down. It says January, February, March at the top. And then it has April as a question mark yeah. and stats above. And this is literally something I just draw in front of them during our virtual tour. Um, and you can either do, like I said, a, you know, I just do the staircase up and down or you can just do a, you know, a slope, a hill. Yeah. 
it can do anything really. It's just, you're wanting them to understand like we're not heading, the market's not increasing right now and I just want them to get that. Or I, or I don't want to take them on. I invest way too much money in each listing to just take them on and just go, let's just try this. You still do print marketing? Um, depending on the area, but not, not very often. It's almost all online based now, but we do in certain neighborhoods that we have still really big success uh, with print marketing, but very little. Um, of the digital marketing that you're doing, if you could narrow it down to your three favorites, because I know marketing, like you don't know what works. It's like a 50, 50 um, generally. But um, if you could narrow it down, what would be the three marketing plays that you think are, you're never going to let go of? Um, I think, well, I mean, the, the way that Jana does our social media marketing um, for an engagement level on our videos uh, is really effective just with like, get, you know, getting new leads, et cetera. So that's something that we're going to continue to do. Now I will say it's completely oversaturated now though. So this changes like literally this is changing month to month. We used to have a way higher percentage of leads coming in, but right. then everyone caught on to this, you know, four years ago and it's just oversaturated now, but this is, it's still effective for us. Um, uh, un un unpack that a little bit because people listening might not even visualize what you're talking about. So um, what's an example? Uh, well, I mean, just right now, like you said, every four scrolls, it's a, it's an ad on Facebook. It's the mm. same thing, right? Where every, every, I feel like every, every time you swipe, it's another realtor showcasing a property, which is great, but it's just, that never used to be the case. It used to be more just sort of us and maybe one or two. Right. Uh, this is before it got big, right? Yeah. Uh, now that it's oversaturated, it's a lot more like, okay, how can you be more creative to stand out? Uh, now we stand out because we just have a lot, right? Like I list, you know, 80 homes myself a year. So like that's a lot of listings. So they're always out there. So people always say out of everyone, I see yours the most. Um, but that being said, they still start to all look the same if you're not being creative. Um, but oh, I mean, are you um, speaking of the listings? Th there's a couple things people can do for the, with their for sale signs that it, like blow my mind that they don't. And I'm not going to put you on the spot in case you don't. So I'm just going to give you the idea in case yeah. you don't roll with these. Um, on the sign post, you should definitely have the uh, an info sheet box where people can take feature sheets out, and you could stop by and and replenish those. That's one. Two is like we'll all have like a sign rider that says like maybe a open house on the top. Yeah. Well, maybe you could get a new sign writer that says virtual open house, text open, and then right. put your cell number. So you're going to get random people texting you on your cell phone the word open. It's not even a paid service or like a subscription. You, it's just a sign. And yeah. you, you know they're in front of an open house. So then you can reply, oh, which one were you looking at? What area? And then you send them the link. But now you got like a texting conversation and you could do like a bomb bomb video to them yeah, totally. and text it to them. So definitely if you have for sale signs, you should be leveraging them to get people interactive so that they, they can actually view a virtual showing yeah, um, and, and make a new sign. Yeah, 100%. And you can do to get their information, right? And just keep connecting. And like, we're, in a, we're in a world now that people want to text more uh, yeah, you know, that's why or, I like the texting. Yeah. Or video email. Like, you know, you said what, what's some other good marketing stuff, our video emails, I'll never give those up, you know, as long as those are doing well right now, we just have way, way larger open, uh, ratios on our emails. Um, just even more, uh, communication back and forth on those. And again, I think it's just because it's a face to a name and you're providing value and like, they're so easy to do and they can be, you know, 10 seconds or two minutes. I'm walking out of a listing appointment. I'm already filming a thank you for having me in your home. Um, you know, thanks for the opportunity. And, and sometimes they see you doing that as you're walking to your car, but then you flip it to them and you drive off and you already got an email thanking you. It's like that, that's already showing you this level of service that I just talked about in our appointment. That's already showing them, wow, this, this person, their follow-up, their service, it's a, it, they walk the walk, right? So, Video email to me is, is, is huge and people that aren't doing it, I, I can't actually, I'm, I'm shocked the amount of people that, that aren't, you know. Yeah, that, that uh, he's talking about bomb bomb for that tool. And uh, you can actually take that link and text it to people as well, not just email. Yeah. You have yeah. a higher open rate on texting. Yeah, you can and text. Then, Right. There's a new player in town called QuickPage that um, is basically like bomb bomb only um, it has less features, but it also has more features. It's like they're different. It's like what they cut back on, they added in different areas. So I like both and uh, quick page is cheaper. So if people are like, oh, I want to try this, uh, look at BombBomb, consider quick page. 
Um, but definitely one of them. Like it's such a virtual communication tool that is amazing. Like you can even have um, on BombBomb or QuickPage, you could make static videos that you right. could use over and over and over. So it's not like you have to make a new video every time you send it. You could have like a, a buyer follow-up video and you could have like a, a seller lead yep. reply. Like, you know what? You can have all these videos on the shelf and done and you just share them as needed. And we get, we get way more response in our, in our asking for our testimonials now because I do it through video. It, used mm. to be, it just used to be a written email. And, you know, after you sell their house, they're sort of, they want to sort of be done with the email so they don't maybe read it all. So we weren't getting as much testimonials back and I knew that they were super happy with the results. So everything's just now me, you know, just talking about how awesome it was working with them. And, you know, I always say, you know, we got two links at the bottom of the screen here, a Google page and a, and a Facebook. And we'd love to hear from, from you on, on how we did. And we love, you know, getting feedback and our, our, like we get hundred percent now, hundred percent testimonials now when we send that and people they'll always respond like, Oh, I love the videos. So it's just a different way of doing it. And, and people enjoy, people are busy. They don't want to have to read, right? They want to be able to click play, hear you talking, maybe they're cooking dinner or something at that time, or they're doing something. And, and they don't have to think. Right. Yeah. Um, did you know that bomb bomb allows people to reply with a video and they don't need to install the app? It's a little hidden feature. So check that off and Very people cool. can hit, hit the reply with video and then they send you a video testimonial. I don't know if it would be a hundred percent. Actually, I, I know it wouldn't be a hundred percent, but it might be a good idea to get a couple of video testimonials. That's very cool. Yeah, that is. Yeah, so it's called, uh, just go to BombBomb Bomb and ask them. It's um, reply with video is the feature and you just got to tick a little box to turn it on. Nice. Yeah, cool. Uh, somebody says another great book, uh, well, Larry says another great book is Atomic Habits. And I think I just downloaded that one. I haven't um, got into it, but um, yeah, I, I did. I, 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 been, I don't have it uh, or I haven't read it, but I've heard of it as well. Yeah. Cool. Well, before we wrap up, is there anything that was burning on your chest that you definitely wanted to cover and talk about before we go? No, you know what? I would just say that like, you know, no one has all the answers with what we're going through right now. And these techniques and technologies change, you know, week to week right now on what's working, what's not working. I would just say that like, you know, Jack Cornfield and that Tim Ferriss podcast said, Oh, was that one, was that podcast specifically about COVID? Yeah, it was, it was, it was I, I literally listened to it. I think it was a couple of days. It just got released and, yeah. and it was obviously going crazier in the States. And he just said that like, you know, obviously way back in the day when the, you know, Viet, Vietnamese refugees would, would, you know, set sail. And if they ran into a storm or pirates and everyone panicked, they'd all, you know, they'd all die or be captured. And he said if one person, though, stayed centered and, and calm, that they would all survive. And that just sort of like, again, hit home with me where it's like if we all panic and freak out and like, don't get me wrong, this is insanely serious. People are losing their lives. So I'm not being insensitive to that. But mm -hmm. if you can stay calm at home and centered for your own family, you know, your own business that you're running, then, then we can get through this. It's going to be hard. Absolutely. Uh, this is not easy. I still have my bad days. I still have great days. So I don't want to, you know, beyond the saying like everything's normal. It's not normal. But if you continue to educate, if you continue to work on personal development, this is an opportunity right now to become a better person. And if you do not, then you've missed a huge opportunity, I think, for self growth. So, you know, that being said, you know, I, I just, I just want everyone to know that nobody has the answers out there. I think it's just awesome though that everyone can get together and brainstorm together. And I think it's an awesome opportunity just to work on yourself. And this doesn't mean you got to still sell five homes a week, you know, 10 homes a month, like put up the numbers that we've been putting up. I already know my goals have to change, but it doesn't mean that I can't still grow as a person. Yeah. Wow. That's powerful, man. Um, repeat the name of the podcast. There's a question. She said, what's the name? Or he, it's just he, called, it's, it's called the Tim Ferriss show. It's his podcast. I've been listening to it for a couple of years. Uh, and who's the guest that he interviewed? Jack. Uh, he, he interviewed Jack Cornfield, and oh, it is this like a super calming one to listen to, more so I think because of his voice, but he just talks a lot about how this is like the world giving us a retreat right now. And again, I'm not being insensitive saying it that way, but he's just talking about how like there's people that pay thousands of dollars to go to some island to sit in a room by themselves and have peace and quiet and go on these retreats where this is essentially what you have right now. So make the best of it. 
uh, you know, you, you need to really, you know, dive into personal growth. And this is a chance for you to read that book that you've always, you know, wanted to read, or maybe you were wanting to write that book that you always wanted to write. Mm-hmm. This is your chance to like, I'm, I'm looking at this and I like, I have spent so much time with my family and I'm a huge family person. If you, if you follow my Instagram page, you'll see that I'm always with them anyways, but this has just been such a blessing for me to be at home with my kids, still be able to somewhat run a business and, you know, go eat lunch with them every day and just like, you know, look at them, you know, um, and, and what my wife's been doing every day with homeschooling and the prep work. It's just been like, there's been a lot of blessings through this too. And again, I know that's fortunate for us because we're not the ones on the front lines right now. So, yeah. but again, I can't remember if you asked me a question, but <laughs> no, I just want to know if there's anything you wanted to say before we hung up and you did. Um, I was going to say, Thank you. There's a bunch of people. Margaret says, she says it really well. She says, uh, thank you, Michael, for being so authentic, genuine, and generous in sharing your experiences, emotions, and thoughts. Really appreciate it. Thank you. She summed up the words perfectly for me. Um, And then there's other people read the comments. They're all saying thank you. Big shout out to you. So I'll leave this up so that you can feel that gratitude and see the appreciation people have for you spending the time with us. I want to say thank you. I want to do that marketing um, virtual listing, yeah, virtual views for your listing. But yeah. remember, you got to do a video of you walking through. So use Loom, walk through a property, talk about it. I don't care how long it is, as long as it's over a minute. And um, I'll do that for you. And then anybody who's on this call that likes the idea of like, oh, I want to get virtual showings happening, uh, reach out to me. I'm going to be doing it for people at 100 bucks a month, and that includes your marketing. And then I'm also going to create a webinar for offices to show agents how they can do it. That way, it's not like a sales ploy for me. I'll freely show you how to do it, and I'll do an office webinar if you guys want me to do this individually for your office and show you guys how to get virtual virtual showings on your yeah, and I'd say too, if you want to even drop my, hey, uh, my, my personal Instagram handle in there. Yeah. What is it? A lot of people are doing my team one. It's at move with Michael. Um, yep. they can follow me there. Cause I always do share a lot on there with, for other realtors. They'll see my social media. They'll see what we're up to. And hopefully maybe that inspires them and gives them some, some good ideas as well. So it's, it's at move with Michael. Um, I just put it in there. Oh, I did that to Margaret. Shit. That's my Instagram, uh, my personal Instagram page. Nice. Yeah, you're one of those guys, like, on the surface, you're kind of in, like, if there is a brand new agent and they bumped into you in the hallway, you might be intimidating to most people because you overdress. You're like a Starbucks model, essentially, <laughs> and uh, you're also super uh, successful. But the, the once you know the guy, dude, you're one of the most genuine, caring, giving people. I love you, man. You're awesome. So I'll end on that note. Thanks for hanging out with us. I'm going to record this. The recording gets put up on Monday evening. And then remember when you're watching this video, maybe times change. Maybe you're watching this in a month or two months and things are a lot worse or things have relaxed a little. So modify what you're hearing and just pick and cherry pick the ideas that we said that can apply to you guys. So I'll, I'll hang up and say, thanks everyone. Thanks man. Thanks for having me. Cool, man. Bye. Thanks. Okay, I want to hang out just for a second while people are hang- leaving. There was 90, at least 90 people on the call. And uh, as you guys are leaving, I'm just going to hang out here. If I didn't answer any questions, repeat them and I'll uh, address them um, so you don't feel left out. Hey, if you want to close more real estate transactions, get more buyer leads and get more seller leads, click this button right here. It'll take you to our real estate group coaching page. Also, if you like this video and want more, you can subscribe by pressing this, or you can check out some of my past videos here. Enjoy!